Welcome to the Inside Scoop episode 50, this time January 1st of 2020. It's a new year. Uh, it's a new, well, not new us, you know. I just wanted to play off of that cliche where people say, you know, new new year, new me. And uh, without wasting any kind of time, I just decided to like jump straight into it with, uh, I guess, just a question right off the bat. What do you think about that quote where when people say new year, new me? Um, I don't think much of it. I don't think I hear it said a lot, actually. I mean, I think usually when I hear it said, it's, it's a joke, really, from most people. Mm. Um, but but if it's not, then, yeah, I don't really pay much attention to it, I guess. Uh, I'm not a New Year, New Me type of guy, I guess. It's just another day for me. It's like... That's true. Uh, pretty much any festive occasion is just another day for me. So, like, every day for me is just the same thing. Even, you know weekdays and week weekends are pretty much the same for me <laughs> so there's there's no special days in my life even my my own birthday if i if i you know if i could well, i could but you know i just i just you know come come back home and just celebrate it with my parents mm. that's pretty much it but i i wouldn't mind not doing that and just not <laughs> forgetting when my birthday is i'd be fine doing that wow. so i just yeah so you don't know it's the same uh what about the uh social medias and, and stuff online or do you just like detach yourself from that completely because i think that cliche is mostly online these days especially with covid and all that we're gonna have huge plans online everyone's like posting you know yeah i don't think i have a lot of friends on facebook who actually post that kind of stuff right now no? yeah no i don't i've only got like between 300 and 400 friends i don't add people mm -hmm. i just wait for people to add me so <laughs> <laughs> it's good though uh, yeah i think you're right like yeah. to be honest i haven't noticed it myself too much this time really used to i think it used to be like earlier back when we were younger like people would would be i don't know more naive about that stuff like yeah as if you know something's gonna change like completely uh like day one you know but but I think yeah. you you brought up a good point about uh, gyms doing doing well around that time. Well, maybe not this year though. But no, oh, yeah, well, um, as any sure. business. But most years, I think January, mm -hmm. maybe February still, and it kind of probably drops off after that. You know, everybody's got their New Year resolutions. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. You know, going to the gym, getting fit, uh, and then you know it ha it lasts for like a, a month too. And then they just forget about it. Yeah, I, I have they, heard. I don't know. Maybe they reach their goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I have heard a thing where people like uh, buy a yearly membership or buy um, I don't know anything, kind of like a present for their you know friends or something. It's like, hey, you know, it's a yearly gym membership. Here you go, and because it's now it's so easy. You know, you already paid the money. You you aren't getting like a, a direct, I don't know, you're not paying it, you know, every week or every month. So you would consciously have to give away money, you know, you kind of like pay it annually. And it's it's way easier to just forget about it. You just look at the, you know, the membership and think, oh, well, who cares, right? Even though that, that, that should, uh, in theory, you know, minimize the friction. Because you already have it, so you should just go to the gym and exercise. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a problem when if somebody gets you it without not discussing mm. it with you beforehand. Uh, you know, if you if you if you get your significant other gym membership, you know, what message are you trying to send them? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's true presents gifts i think yeah we haven't we haven't even talked about gifts in our christmas yeah, special yeah that's the other thing but i'd say gifts uh like I, i'm not big on on like presents and stuff i haven't like gifted many things over my life but me neither uh consumables i think consumables is the way to go 
so me and my flatmate we were like going to to this guy's like I don't know place to have like a small dinner well the regulations allowed it like it's it's illegal you know I'm not saying not putting out there that we you know we were doing some illegal gathering or whatever but mm -hmm. it was like he comes back with like a thermal cup uh, from a shop he's like okay I'm gonna you know give this as a present to the person the thermal cup I'm like I don't know dude do you think the person does not have his favorite you know thermal cup or something or, or whatever and like do you think this is actually going to be useful or is it going to be one of those things where you just gift it to him he just like throws it out or but but because because it's a gifted thing you don't just want to like throw it out because you know you're like you got it as a present so then we just decided against that and i don't know we just bought cookies and whatever just like consumables you know even if if to be honest i, I guess a gym membership even if even a gym membership is kind of a consumable because like an experience mm -hmm. a thing you know where someone like gifts you a a jump with a parachute out of the plane or something you know like a coupon to to go and do that yeah i think i think that's good cause, oh, my my sister's my sister and I guess her boyfriend, but I, it's probably my sister's uh, idea because guys are probably not that good with <laughs> presents and thinking of presents. Yeah. Uh, she got, um, I guess, a, not a ticket, a, a, a booking, a ticket to go uh, for me and my dad to go fishing somewhere. Uh, some place I think like staying overnight there mm. uh, and fishing for two days mm -hmm. which is really cool because my dad uh, and I go fishing sometimes mm. or angling it's yeah, called yeah. Um, so, that's, so that's a good present yeah it's know? totally awesome and it's especially not... it, it encourages like just a ah that's even a better present than just like okay go and jump out of a plane with a parachute you know because <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. it's a time for uh, for you and your dad and shit I think that's, yeah, that's personal. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, but it's hard to come up with presents anyway for everybody. Mm. Like I, I only get presents from my closest family, uh, and you know, I don't, I don't really worry that much for if, if I have a present for somebody or not. Like for my parents, I had, a, I did worry actually, <laughs> but for my parents, I just got a CD uh, with music. Uh, an album of gorillas, a new album. Um, and then I got a little toy, a little small Rubik's cube two by two for my nephew. It's, it's, it's an eight plus toy. You know how they rate, rate them uh, in like, yeah. in how, how, what age is good for, but my nephew's like three years old. So I was like, oh, <laughs> he's going to figure it good. out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I couldn't figure anything out. And yeah. I was like, just, if anything, it's going to be a joke. <laughs> so, because like, yeah, presents are stupid. But, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's fun for, for kids to, it's a fun period for kids to open presents. And everything. No, absolutely. But absolutely, man. For adults, I just don't, um, don't want any adults to expect uh, anything from me as for a present. And I don't expect anything from other, other adults because mm -hmm. it's just going to be, I mean, I got a candle for my sister and it's like, I don't know, maybe you'll like it, maybe not. It's a nice That's candle. Awesome. It's also consumable, so, so fits, right? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Um, so that's the that's the presents. I think we can wrap this section up by saying what gift consumables. Don't make people hoard things that they don't want to, but they yeah. can't get rid of because it's uh, like a sentimental value and they would feel bad because, you know, I have heard about That's like right. regifting and all that nonsense, and I'm like, nah, I'd rather just stay away from all this. Um, so, uh, another thing, the main topic for today, and we're gonna quickly go through is just, uh, well, a year in review. So, I published my blog post, yearly blog post, hopefully from now on, you know, it's, uh, it's not that difficult of a thing to do, and especially doing it once every 365 whatever days. I think I'll manage. <laughs> That's uh, that. That could be a habit. Uh, it was a quick one, but I made I made it like a a post today, um, reflecting on, and it's by no means you know a perfect one. It doesn't encompass all the things, but I just talked about a few main themes. You know about uh, 
Uh, I guess I can just go go more in depth. So I talked about my game Squirrel Forest. I talked about Twitch and like how I started streaming and like spent so much time and like got the affiliate on on a specific platform, well called Twitch, you know, and and then realized that it's kind of well, there's no discoverability and all that, and I'm not really getting much benefit out of this. It's just like a hobby thing. So I should probably you know put my effort somewhere else. Uh, then I talked about uh performance and motivation and the dosha which we were we uh i don't know if we discussed it on the podcast uh vata pitta kapha the the three motivation well not the motivation types but like doshas do you remember it from like I'd... no i don't think we have no yeah i probably haven't talked about that i think we can make a whole episode next time so it just not getting too much in, in into detail um, so yeah, I just talked about how I discovered this and, you know, how this can influence your motivation type and talked about programming, what I learned, blah, blah, talked about career and exercise. And that's it. Like, it's just a quick, you know, like a blog post, which hopefully will allow me to look back. And it was difficult writing this one because like, I don't have the monthly ones, which I plan. I think monthly ones would be, uh, even shorter uh, quick, quicker things, which I would probably like fill in when the month goes. And I would just like, look at the, cause it's just markdown files essentially. Right. So you just take them, write stuff down, you know, fill in your stuff. Like, I don't know, whatever it is, you learn something new today. You found out that, you know, sky is green or something, just type it in, you know, sky is green. And then at the end of the month, you just take that thing that you've written down, like sky is green and make it a a paragraph or like a little sentence. And that's it. That's your blog post, put it in there, publish it. Doesn't matter. No one's reading it. It's for you. It's for you to like reflect back. And then boom, at the end of the year, you have 12 things to go through. You can read them all and like, okay, well, that was my year. You can compare it to the, so yeah, that was my, my new idea and initiative for, for the new year. So if not for setting any new year's resolutions, for ourselves, you know, because because uh, I remember last episode we, we were talking like, oh, you know, what kind of things could we set uh, as our New Year's resolutions for ourselves? But I think I don't want to set anything that I'll not be able to like continue continue on. So I I, th- I think my main two things that I want to just put out on record, two things is one well, one being this, which I will at the end of every month I'll publish a short blog post for myself, if not for anyone else, you know, which says what I learned, what's, what's good. And then, you know, because it's like, it's like offloading our long term memory somewhere else. Because you lose ideas. And as the filmmaker David Lynch said, it's like, you do have to write your ideas down somewhere because there may come a point where you are gonna forget and he forgot like three good ideas already and I, an idea which was so good that you're like oh it's, it's impossible to forget because this idea is huge right but then you forget it and then you realize that suicide is probably an option well speaking his words he's like no nah, i'd rather suicide than like forget this idea so now i just write down everything so i think that's good because we're like cyborgs and hybrids or whatever you know we're using technology to assist our memory to be offloaded or whatever. It's a weird concept. We can make another episode on this to just like how yeah. technology allows us to be kind of cyborgs already. So yeah, I'll not ramble on any anymore. So that's the thing. First of it is making these posts and just, you know, looking back. And the second one, I guess, is to, it's a weird one. It's like a physical one. I think I told you about it. Just like breathe deeper. Because that's Mm. the key to inner peace. That's the key to meditation. It's about like being aware and conscious about things where in a situation of like stress or whatever, if you, because no wonder when you meditate, someone says, you know, breathe deep, think about your breath, right? And well, (laughs) if you don't breathe, you die. That just makes sense. So like we all know how to breathe, but it's like, it's a, it's almost as if it's a meditation practice. So I just, you know, wish to myself this year to find more time to take my uh, attention back to the breath. And that way, not only I'll, you know, 
be more chill and like i'll reconnect with you know whatever oh, mm -hmm. it's kind of self-explanatory boom that's it i'm done <laughs> it sounds like a good plan no it's doable hopefully well it is doable that's for sure so <laughs> so you can follow so you can follow through with it and then yeah. anything else is an extra <laughs> yeah well if i don't i'll be a loser absolutely i'm just putting it out there like if i don't do this i'll just be a loser and i try to keep my word well i usually keep my word so i'll do this <laughs> what about yourself fair enough out of thoughts yeah i'm not really making any new year's resolutions i never i don't i don't think i have for i don't i don't know if i ever have i haven't done any recent years but uh i mean over the, the past couple of days just been living day to day every day doing a little bit of coding and uh just probably just going to try to continue this pattern i think if i've i am um, settling down into some sort of um, a lifestyle um something that's not about making big plans or grandiose plans just you know just live in a just doing a thing. Uh, it's not. It's not like a, a plan for how the rest of the year is going to go. It's just, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't know what to say. There's no plan. <laughs> there's no plan. That's good. There's some. There's some. There's. There has been some. Okay. There's a. There's been some thoughts. So you know, I have a little bit of a, a belief that you know theory is important uh and you know plan planning uh kind of goes under theory i guess or together with theory but without practice uh you don't um you don't really know if it's any good uh so it's like for me the planning happens as i go uh along and do and do the thing so you know little, little small small things at a time so you start with something small and then just add things onto it and make it a routine as you as you often say uh so you know right now i'm not putting too much pressure on myself just kind of try try to chill out a little bit over the christmas break take a break and and uh, start you know properly again after i'm back uh, home at my own flat um but um yeah i've just already been doing a lot of coding and it's not like been um i've not been forcing myself to do it i just sat down and decided i want to do it and i had some plans and uh uh just picking up things here and there and and hopefully make it into some sort of a routine i can't have a routine right now unfortunately because uh there's a lot going on here often and my nephew's here and these uh you know things are unpredictable you know when i'm on my own in my flat pretty much every day is the same which is important to for productivity um you know to to use my time efficiently because if you have to make a plan every day and then in the middle of the day you have to change it because something comes up you know that eats up a lot of your time you know making those decisions eats up a lot of energy um so if you can have a routine for every day and this is essentially what i've had later in like the latter half of the summer uh, which was okay and like i was you know on my own terms so i wasn't maybe working the hardest so it's like hard to measure uh but i did get a lot of done in the latter half of the summer in terms of you know learning maths for example yeah, i really did learn a lot, a lot from that um and then, you know, I had my plan for the semester and this is where the theory without practice is, is not, not very good comes in. It's like, you know, when people, engineers develop something, it's like you first plan it and then you test it, right? Mm. And then you see what doesn't work and then you go back to the drawing board. Um, so, you know, the theory that I had, that was essentially the, the test for it, but it was it was a very high stakes, right? because it's an entire semester uh, and i was like i guess i can you know get myself to that level uh of work ethic for the semester and then afterwards i can chill out that was that was the theory anyway i was simplifying it but that was kind of the theory 
uh, and it didn't work. So that's that's um, you know where the practice part is important. You have to put your theory into practice and find out what you have missed. Uh, and so when this is a continuous process that you do every day, right, to create a routine. Um, so say you realize that something's, you know, you, you start with doing one thing every day, right? Um, and then after a while, you realize how much time it takes you. Mm. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to slot in another thing here. And I'm going to see how those two work together. And then after a while, it's kind of settled again. And then slowly you can build up and fill out your day and make a routine for like a whole day. So like develop uh, it, takes, it from, from ground up, right? Yeah, develop it slowly uh, like that. Uh, and I've done that before and it, it, it worked pretty, works pretty well. Uh, but when you try to do many things at once, plan many mm, things at once, and, sure. and you're either going to crash and burn or I don't know what the other alternative is. You get lucky. Uh, but uh, the chances are you're just going to crash and burn because something goes wrong somewhere and you don't know where it goes wrong. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's not hard to fix it because you're in, you know, you've got stuff to do because you've scheduled your entire days and now you're not, you know, doing the things. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's a, such a rant, but yeah. yeah no, I see, I see nope. what you mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, so, do you maybe want to wish yourself, like, I don't know, to, to be able to successfully develop a routine or something? Um, come, come back to the ground, mm. you know? No grandiose plans. Mm. Um, just, like, simple things. I've, you know, sat down to read my Linux textbook and just kind of reading through it. And, you know, I, for some reason, I think it's the way I learn because I was like really, you know, quite into uh, working uh, with things from first principles. Mm. And I, were, I talked about this before, um, which is like great in physics and other, you know, hard sciences like that. But in computer science, it's not depending on which part of computer science, if it's like high level programming, working from first principles isn't ideal. Um, and so my approach was always like incorrect really, but I've learned over a long time to adjust my approach to um, learning these things. Um, the other thing was um, that the way I used to learn is I would just like experiment with everything because I was kind of, I guess I was kind of bored with what I was doing, you know. So when I would program, when we were learning programming in C, you know, or, or C plus plus or Java or whatever, I don't know which one it was, you know, I would just like kind of go down into, dig down into the um, um, functions, the you know, the standard library or whatever, that, and see where it was interacting with the operating system and try to figure it out. And like the problem, of, like I was trying to use that to figure out how the computer works and stuff. The problem with it was that I wasn't like very familiar with any of these languages to the extent that I could understand how they've written those low level even um, because they use uh, you know some wacky syntax that you only know as an advanced programmer of that language, and so that was never a good way of doing it. And you know what I've learned is that right now the best way for me to do it is how you know an engineer would do it is just you know read how understand the tool. You know, whatever it is, you know, read tools, read manual, read read books, read manuals, and just you know follow what it says there. Because you know about me, um, I, I like to try to break things all the time and uh, find alternative ways. But you know, the way to learn as an engineer is to just kind of follow what uh, what is you know what the knowledge that is known already and apply it. And and so that's what I'm trying to do with programming. And then the um. You know, my journey with psychology and AI is like a long-term thing. So right now I'm just focusing on um, my technical ability with computers um, so I can potentially get a software engineering or software programming job over the summer and, you know, make some money uh, so I can plan for the future. Um, and in the meantime, you know, 
whatever time I have left and whatever energy that I have left, you know, dedicate that to uh, my psychology journey and my AI journey uh, because I like to do that. I like to take that slowly, but you know, it can't be my career if I'm taking it slow. Like it can't be my main source of income if I'm taking this approach to it. Um, so that's always like lingering there. And it's, you know, once I get a good job pr- as a programmer, uh, and I can eventually retire, hopefully early, uh, then, you know, try to pursue, uh, those hobbies, I guess those, you know, I don't, I don't think they're really hobbies because I pour a lot of heart and soul into them, uh, a lot of hard work um into psychology especially like i mess myself up for it i put myself for shit for psychology uh because i experiment on myself um so i i I do believe it is work uh but i've got to focus on something that's going to give me money now and i think taking on the mindset mindset of an engineer you know i can i can learn a lot and starting and finishing projects, uh, making, you know, practically applying any theory that I have, right? And so knowing the the limitations and how to make the computer do what I want it to do very well, and, you know, how to write good algorithms for for what I want to do and what algorithms to use and what data structures and how to deal with big data and stuff like that, that's all important for research later on. you know, that's a, I think that's a toolkit that any scientist today would want to have because it gives them a lot of power for research. And so I feel like this is the time for me to develop that skill set while, you know, providing myself with some financial security and career security for the future. And it might be that the, the security completely takes my mind off of all the ideas that I had in psychology and AI. And I forget about that and I'm like, I stop caring about it because suddenly, you know, my life is all great. I've got a job and stuff. Mm. But maybe it isn't that. Uh, And if it is, then it won't matter when I'm there because if it would, then I would still pursue psychology, right? And AI. But if it doesn't matter, then it just doesn't matter. So that's kind of, that's basically planning, right? Mm-hmm. And so we will see how that works out in practice. So if you know any of it changes, I'm not bothered about it. But that's kind of yeah. kind of where my mind is right now. I've had some time to think. But yeah. Does that sound like? Um, have you ever heard of ikigai? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the Japanese yep. philosophy and stuff. So ikigai uh, is a concept, literally translating into like a reason for being. And for anyone who doesn't know, you can just go to Google. It's Ikigai, I-K-I-G-A-I. And you can Google like four circles. It shows the four circles, which pretty much are like a thing where they meet in the middle. That's your, you know, the Ikigai, that's your, your, well, your Dharma and other, I guess, other concepts, other languages and beliefs. So it's like what you love, what you're good at, what your needs are. Uh, know what the world needs and what you can be paid for so it's as long as you can match all of those you know you're good at something what you like but that thing needs to be needed by the world and if, if you are getting paid on top of that that's like you should probably just go and pursue it you know <laughs> so um yeah i think that's a nice episode we got there um, yep it worked out your ikigai um yeah i guess anything we can say for the folk just uh well <laughs> breathe guys always don't forget to take a breather is is that how it's called a breather i'm not sure like uh, a break what is a breather a i break. think so a brief pause for rest here we go so that's it Exactly. Literally a breather. Take a breather. As as if, you know, we weren't taking them last year already. Like it breaks from everything, but try and uh, get some inner peace going. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not even a new start. It's not an old, old beginning or whatever, you know, it's just uh, 
it keeps going. It's a cycle. It's a rhythm. Today is a new year, so it's like a 50. Oh, it is. Yeah, the 50th episode, new year, all of that special new year edition. But it's nothing special because, you know, special comes from not being special. Okay. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's it from us. If you have something. Nope. In that case, Happy New Year, everybody, and catch y'all next week. Happy New Year.